Thanks for being with us on the New Life Show with Dr. Michael Lightman. Hello, Dr. Lightman. Hello, everyone. Hello, Yael Shadarel. Hello. And today we'd like to talk to Dr. Lightman about the relationships between people. We'd like to understand how can we create more advanced connections between us in order to make our life much, much better. Be with us, Yael, please. Yeah, today we'd like to talk about the super organism. The super organism is that unit, if we compare it with the animate world, it's like a beehive, an ant colony, where all those animals act as one group, as one unit, and what they feel is the comprehensive unit, not the individual. And today, there's also this approach among researchers that talks about the human superorganism. This approach says that all of us are actually one interconnected system. Each of us is a kind of individual in that interconnected system. And there is one great big reciprocal system that we all exist in, like one big organism that we're all like one big man or one big mankind. And I'd like to ask, do you agree with this approach? Of course. Furthermore, also the still, the vegetative inanimate, besides man and including man, it's all one big super organism. This approach is called network science that actually talks about the system of interconnections between us. We can see the communication between us in the technological system, but here we're talking about the inner system of connection that exists between us. What is that system? It's controlled by one force that's called nature or the creator. It doesn't matter how you call it. The upper force, upper, because it controls us. And this one force, through development, is leading us to a certain goal, where we will discover that we're connected, we're connected now too, only we'll discover that we're connected in a special, round, integral, whole and complete way. What's the difference between that human superorganism and any other kind of superorganism in nature. Well, nature, these are small parts of it, like small flocks, schools, that are connected for a certain period of time, but then they part, like with fish or other animals birds, and so on. The thing is that there is no permanent connection, but they come and go. And nature sustains these things in order to continue the generations, because you can't continue a generation without connection, even if it's for a few seconds, for a few minutes. And this is what's happening to us. Now, besides that, human beings, in them it's according to their development, involvement, because in them it's a gradual development throughout history, and therefore in each and every generation there's a different kind of connection, and the connection is partially natural, partially artificial. It also depends on the development of society itself, where is it? How is it? Where are we today in this process of development? Today we're in a very sharp transition from natural families, husband, wife, children, to something new that our ego in its development kept us for many years in a state where we wanted to have a family, we wanted to have a mom, dad, even grandparents, me and my wife and our children and grandchildren, and that there's a connection between all of us, and throughout the generations, this connection was actually kept in a good way. 
But still, because our ego is developing us and it's rejecting us from each other, then what happens is that the family started to separate a bit, parents from their children, children from their parents, from the grandparents, grandparents from their grandchildren, so much so that today you can't exactly say what's going on. We're in a transitional phase, but for sure that our natural connection has immensely weakened and as if no one wants it. I want to stay connected with my parents, as if I'm speaking on part of the younger generation, because I'm well off with them. As long as they can give me something, then great, and when they can, then I leave. I no longer feel those same feelings towards them as before, because our ego grew and it cancels our natural feeling, and this is how we are today. So, there are two contradicting phenomena here. On the one hand, we're talking about that superhuman organism where everyone's interconnected in one system, and on the other hand, that naturally an individual is growing apart from all those units that in the past connected him to something, with something. He wants to be on his own, in and of himself. How do these two things go together? Do they go together? No, they can't go together because our ego that grows, we even see that the younger generation, they lock themselves in their room and only yell out of there, Mom, give me something to eat and don't come into my room. And that's how they live. And what's going to happen in the next generation? I hope that already in this generation we'll achieve the recognition of the evil of the situation itself and we'll correct ourselves. The recognition of evil of what? That we'll see that the situation is bad, that we're creating such a separation between us that no one benefits from that no one enjoys, that by that we harm each other. It's like the end of human development. Who does it harm? Everyone, parents and children. We're breaking the family framework, which is a natural framework that exists for a certain period of time in the still, in the vegetative, in the animate, and in the speaking, on the human level, always. For some time. For bears, it could be a few months. For people, it could be a hundred years. But still, it exists in order to continue the generation. Therefore, this is something natural and very strong. Today, we're reaching a state where we don't even want that. We don't want to have children, all the more. We don't want a family. We don't want to have a family. We don't want to have a family like before, where we have to serve each other. I have enough gadgets and devices at home that I don't need a spouse. And if I need someone as a partner for sex, then nowadays I can get along. In short, we have reached a state where... There's no benefit to the ego, because I have to give account to myself. Why should I do it? Take upon myself such a commitment and responsibility. For what? In order to keep another person next to me? That's all the time invading my personal life. Because my ego doesn't want to let anyone in there. And so we're in a state where actually this era is coming to an end. So every individual is going to close inside himself. Yes. Okay. So if then we're going to see a mankind with plenty of individuals, each of them closed inside himself, then it's actually the opposite of a superorganism. Right. And here will come the recognition of evil, that we can advance this way. We will feel that... By that, we're actually starting to lose our human image, that we're becoming like puppets, machines, and 
without being interconnected, connected in a family and society like it was up until 20 or 30 years ago, we're completely losing our human shape, our human form, and we become parts of a computer. So an individual person will no longer want to be isolated from everything? No. That's the recognition of evil. This is something that we'll have to attain, but a person won't want that anymore. Our life will be very mechanical in regard to our connection. Mechanical, I don't know how else to put it. Cold. Cold, that's only technical. And this won't satisfy or fulfill us. We'll feel that this way, it's not we who are in control of life, but that life is completely in control of us. And then what will we want? One way or another, we'll want to fill ourselves with feeling. We're feeling beings. The desire to receive pleasure, this is our nature. And even though that today I want to get rid of this will to receive pleasure because... I feel no fulfillment, and if some feeling makes me feel bad, then I want to get rid of that feeling. But when I get rid of my feelings, I become a machine. And here I feel that I have no choice, I have to do something. And because we'll have no choice, we'll return to our feelings. And, of course, there are several more changes here on the way. How to put this? There are people that prefer to suffer, to feel bad, but still, to feel. It's better to feel something, and I'm willing to even feel bad, than to be dead. Okay, let's take another step forward. Out of this emotional distress, the coldness and technicality and everything that a person experiences where he's separated from others, the superhuman organism will be created? No, this will come from the recognition of evil. I understand. From the state of isolation where I feel cold and technical that I'm like a computer instead of... From this, we'll advance to a place of creating new connections between us that will make us into a superorganism? Yes. Can you describe this superorganism that will build that of the cold, out of the recognition of evil. It's not only the coldness between us, but that we'll also feel how unfriendly we are towards nature and nature towards us. The still, the vegetative, the animate. We're, we're in a galaxy, we're on this planet, we're destroying this planet, we're destroying our atmosphere and the relationships between us and what's under the ground everything, that we have such relationships, egoistic relationships between us and such an attitude towards everything, the still, the vegetative, the animate and other people, that if I activate my ego, I destroy the world and then I myself die. So we'll start tying all these parts together? Yeah, because a person doesn't see what he's doing today, he doesn't care if he's destroying the planet or not. That's only for now, it's a short-term thing. Still, if a person will start feeling it, then he'll have no choice. And this is what we have to see, that this is the future of mankind. Okay, and from there, from there it's called the recognition of evil. The recognition of evil will bring us to a calculation that what? That we have to be interconnected between us and with the nature around us, the still, the vegetative and the animate. And that we have to connect. And the more we will reach the need for connection, we will see that all in all, we're in the ego, and a force that's separating us. How can we come closer to each other? We don't have the force to do it. We don't. We see that even if I want to connect with someone, it's only for some time in order to get what I need. And that's it. 
So what do you do? And here mankind will start thinking, where does it take that positive force from, the force of connection? And all of mankind, and it's already happening lately, will start turning to the people of Israel, because they have the method of connection and the ability and the knowledge of how to reach that force that connects, that bridges the gaps, the distance, the rifts between us, and then the entire world will want to come to Israel and really destroy it. Why? Because they'll feel that Israel, instead of connecting them, is actually pushing them away from each other. So, if we'll destroy them, we'll be better off. Israel appears here as something that separates between everyone, turns everyone against everyone, that's doing harm to everyone. And then we'll have to show that, no, actually we can be that substance that connects everyone because we have a method. And the main thing about us is that in us there is this quality that connects and without us, there will be no connection. Without us, in each and every nation, between each and every couple, between every two people, there will be a feeling that Israel is between them and is standing in the way of their connection. Imagine, even between a couple in Korea, between countries and South America, doesn't matter where, between tribes in the south or the north of the world, this will be the feeling, and it says so in the Torah, that all of the nations will really begin to go against Israel. And this is something that we're starting to see now. Let's talk about this connecting quality or substance. What is that? What is that substance that can connect people? What is this quality? Connection, love, mutual connection. It's a part of God from above that exists in all of the people of Israel, in each person from Israel, a part of God from above, as the force of connection, only that it's hidden. It's wrapped up inside the great big ego that exists in Israel. The process that you just described is that people are becoming more and more separated. Along with it, there are two feelings. One is that you feel that you become like a machine. You live this mechanical kind of life and you want to start feeling something. And another thing is that you understand that nature, you're you're killing it. And so you have to start looking at things more globally. And the recognition of evil will come from these two things. A person will feel need for connection in order to feel something, and also to connect with nature in order for things around him to be sustainable. Now, for this you need a positive force that starts connecting these parts. What connects to what there? Because everything's separated. What is the common ground around which everyone unites? It's the upper force that we want for the upper force to dwell between us, among us, the quality of love, connection, where we take each other into consideration. By that, we start feeling a higher world, a higher reality that's integral and eternal. Eternal, because no one's locked inside himself, but we're starting to acquire a common mind, a common feeling that's called the upper, the superior. And then we start feeling that we're in the upper world. So what connects us? What will connect two people that over time withdrew more and more into themselves? 
that force that will be revealed between them. They have to reveal it, they have to reveal it. Then, from the sorrow, they'll start hearing how to reveal it. And they'll listen to the Kabbalists, and they'll use this entire method in order to draw the force of connection and to instill it between them. When you do bring this kind of force that connects people together and a connection starts to form that you called an integral connection, a common mind, common feeling, higher, more advanced, this is the creation of a superorganism. Two individuals that were separated, now they become like this super-created being. Yeah, this is also what you said about ants and bees. However, the thing here is, and it's a big difference, is that there it happens instinctively, in nature and the animal world. Yes, and we have to do it ourselves, that we really want for it to have control over us. The connection that people have to create between them, from the understanding that we're so distant, so cold, everything so technical and so on, this is the next phase of our development, this is what will advance a person to the next stage of his evolution? Yes. So let's call, by, by the way, does it matter if there are two or a hundred or or two billion people in this connection? No, the main thing is the connection. Okay, so people's ability to connect, even though that the ego is pulling them apart, if still they can bring this adhesive, this connecting force, then they already form this small superorganism, regardless of how many people there are. Right. Okay, this creature that has a collective feeling, a collective mind that's much more advanced, what does it feel, emotionally-wise, that I can't or don't feel today as an individual? What is it about it that I can't experience as an individual? Once you start feeling the other as yourself, by that you feel the upper force the upper force. By that you feel that you come out of your egoistic framework and you experience reality above the ego in the force of bestowal and love instead of in the force of rejection, hatred, and so on. And in that you see life that's beyond death, you see the eternal world. This superorganism that consists out of the connection between individuals, what's important for it? To only be adhered to the Creator, the upper force, that is, the good that does good, that's eternal, whole and complete, and more and more. How? By more and more kinds of connections, with more and more people. What does it mean to be adhered to the upper force? To be adhered to the upper force, it means to be connected to his nature, the good that does good, love, connection, bestowal. And what are the aspirations of this more advanced creature? He aspires for what? To do good. To whom? To everyone. Because the ego, it remains between everyone, and upon the ego, you can all the time connect with the others in good. What kind of thoughts does that more advanced creature have? Only about that, how to connect with others spiritually. Spiritually meaning that between them, there's rejection, there's hatred, and above that, they feel love, connection, closeness. How will this influence an individual's day-to-day -day life? There is no individual. He really feels as a part of the collective. He'll feel the rejection between everyone and the connection with everyone, and will all the time increase the good over the bad. Therefore, he won't be like bees or ants. What then? He'll all the time be in a group that's connecting more and more, 
that's developing itself because the egoistic will to receive is growing all the time and the connection between everyone is becoming all the time more and more qualitative and quantitative Previously, we talked about the coldness, the technicality, that because a person is disconnecting from everyone more and more, he'll feel like a computer is something. Now that he's starting to form these new connections, what will he feel? He has hatred and love. The hatred doesn't disappear. The ego doesn't disappear. Only that love covers for all crimes and then the gap between the hate and the love grows more and more and then in between them he feels all the forms of life, all of its colors. What about the cold? It's there. Cold, hatred, rejection, it's all there. And all that is covered with love, with connection, with warmth. Warmth that comes from what? From wanting to be together, despite the rejecting forces. Because precisely because of the forces of rejection, rejection, remoteness, all these things, when you overcome them, you feel how they're like a bit of pepper and salt, give you a taste in life. So, if I understand correctly from a creature that didn't want to feel anything that became more and more technical, Suddenly, you open up to a variety of feelings. It doesn't happen suddenly, but yeah. And a person really starts feeling, yes. Now, life, in this place where, on the one hand, you feel many emotions, from zero to a hundred, hate on the one hand, love on the other hand, it's hard life, it's good life, it's what? First of all, it's the feeling of life. And when you live it out, love covers for all crimes. This stays. They're crimes, and they're covered with love. You can't feel love without... Our entire problem is that we want to be drawn to the one side or the other. And here they come as a sandwich. How is that person like who we are today, and how is he different? He has the correct attitude, a mature attitude, to the bad and to the good, and he knows how to connect them. So he knows how to balance them out, because nowadays both the good and also the bad many times simply throw us off course. So the correct connection, that's called the middle line, there are these concepts and the wisdom of Kabbalah that explains how to do it. And then we'll eat this state, we'll drink it, we'll enjoy it, it'll fulfill us, and its taste is called the taste of heaven. And on this optimistic note, unfortunately our time's up, Dr. Lightman. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yael. Thank you for being with us. Till next time, all the best.